today on The Joy Sutton Show. Need help finding your J spot? That's right, ladies. The Joy Doctor is in the house. And how far can you go online without crossing the line? Our Real Talk experts talk online infidelity. Should you go for the glow? We'll show you the do's and don'ts of spray tanning. The Joy Sutton Show starts right now. It's your day. It's your moment. Find your joy on The Joy Sutton Show. Welcome to The Joy Sutton Show. She calls herself the joy doctor, but her life wasn't always so joyful. In her book, The Daughter of a Porn King, she reveals her dark past and what it took to find true joy. Joining us is Dr. Cynthia Glickman. Thank you so much for joining us and bringing us some joy. You know, All right. People can't just have me, they gotta have their own joy. <laughs> so we're so happy that you joined us. And first I want to take me back to your childhood. You've written a book about it, The Daughter of a Porn King, and I think that reveals a lot. But what was yeah. your childhood like for you? Well, I was five years old when I went to my first porn convention. Wow. Yeah, so <laughs> we rolled up to the Tropicana Hotel and Casino. My dad handed us our backstage passes, and my six-year-old brother and I grabbed each other's hand and went strolling down to mm. the convention hall, and we walked into what was the adult circus, and mm. I saw Tarzan and Jane swinging from the ceiling, and lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Right? That was just really crazy. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. you know, imagine the, the, these little children without adult supervision walking in and... And, and I how mean, did that affect you? I mean, how did that impact your childhood? Because seeing that so young yeah. has to do something to you. Yeah, so for me, what happened was I was observing all of these bootylicious mamas walking around and you can imagine that throughout my childhood and, and my brother's there being kissed by all these women saying, oh, look at the beautiful boy. And he's, he, he left that day with kiss marks on his face. And, and I left with a scar on my heart feeling, I'm fat, I'm ugly, how will I ever measure up? Is that what I need to look like in order to be loved? Mm -hmm. And so this so, perpetuated throughout your life, just going yeah. through that. And you told me earlier that you got to the point that it was so dark for you. How bad did it get for you just yeah. having that not feeling good enough just because of the things you saw as a child? Well, at five years old, I was on my first liquid diet. At you were at five years old during your first yeah, liquid diet? Yeah, chocolate shakes, you know. Mm, wow. <laughs> and by the time I was 12 years old, I was finding myself slumped over the toilet, um, binging and purging myself and mm. just trying to live up to this ideal of what I thought I needed to be like to be loved. So then I was at the age of 35, you know, Googling the terms how to kill myself painlessly. Wow. So that was kind of the, the, the breaking, point, the breaking point. And I crawled up my stairs that day. And as I collapsed at the top, I set my laptop down. And there was a, another woman that had blogged the same thing. And the response somebody had said to her is, if anything, you should live for your dogs. Mm. And in that blessed moment, my two little angels came up and kissed my face. I have uh, happy and prosper. Those are my two babies. <laughs> and so at that moment, going from all that you had been through, it was like you found something to live for. And you said, I'm not only going to live, but I'm going to find joy. You got it. So it's been a journey now. So, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and I, that 750,000 Americans attempt suicide every year. And wow. so for me, I said, you know what? This is a choice. I can decide right now to change my life and I'm no longer going to let anybody outside of myself determine my circumstance. You know, I had just been broken up with a, with a boyfriend I thought I was going to marry and uh, the market had crashed and I had lost everything. And, and so I thought, woe is me. But you know what? Bottom line is you can all choose right this minute to say, hey, I'm going to be happy. And so I've been on a mission to and spread you world happy, joy. Girl. You're just like, <laughs> you walk in, you exude happiness. And what I like is you're going to come up and you've written a book and I love it. It's called the J spot. So it has everybody. They're like, what did she say? Did she say J spot? I did say J spot. It's J for joy. With joy for joy. So we are keeping a G here. So when we come back, you're going to give us some of the five things you talk about in your book that will help us get there. Because you said it is a choice, right? It's Absolutely. a choice. Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank right. you. And we'll be right back with more from Dr. Glickman. And we are finding our joy today.
Welcome back. We're here with Dr. Cynthia Glickman, a.k.a. The Joy Doctor, and she's helping us find our J-Spot. It's actually a book she's in the final stages of writing. Finding yeah. your J-Spot is getting everybody <laughs> excited, but really we're talking about finding your joy. So we are keeping a G here on The Joy Sutton Show. But you talk about the five secrets, the five things that you can really do to find that J-Spot, to find that joy. Take me through some of those Okay, and I've five kept things. it simple because they all start with L, so you, so you can always remember, right? I love that, L for love. And L, L for love, let's start with love, okay? okay. Is that so one of them? Oh, it, it is, is one, one of them. them. Okay. <laughs> okay, so. And I love you. Oh, I love you too, I appreciate that. So it starts with loving ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you hear that a lot, but what does it mean? It, you know, it could start with just saying, oh, this is a beautiful flower, I love this flower. And if we can appreciate and love something even outside of ourselves and then bring it into ourselves is, is really a, a start. Okay. Oh, so loving yourself. And you said yeah. if you can find beauty in the small things, you'll find that yeah. same beauty in yourself. Yeah. I love that. Okay. Next one. <laughs> so living, live full out. You know what? This is like a roller coaster ride sometimes, life, right? There's mm -hmm. gonna be ups and there's gonna be downs, but right? Woohoo! With your hands up. Mm -hmm. Because if you're struggling and you're fighting that roller coaster, like, oh, you know, I don't, oh my gosh, right? You're gonna, it's gonna be painful. So if you can just let yourself go and enjoy the ride. So just living in yeah, that moment. Yeah, yeah. And you, that's what you do. You walk in and you're like, I'm living, I'm happy. I don't care what y'all think I got going on in my head. So, so I like that. So you said the first one's love, live. Next one? Okay, well, the next one is, is the obvious, right? Laugh, be willing. Ooh, does it help? Let me start trying. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make you laugh. Once you get I like that. started, mm -hmm. right? And it's contagious. So it's, it's contagious. Because nobody can be irritated if you're laughing. Right. It makes you and feel good. I got to tell you something, Joy. I don't know if you know, but I was fired from a job mm -hmm. because I laughed too much. Did you? <laughs> Interesting. I didn't know you could laugh too but much. But it was though. awesome thing about it. Well, it actually happened twice. <laughs> Whoa. So you're like, here you are finding your joy. Yeah. Every time I was you laugh. <laughs> but I like that. So laughter, you said, is the next one. Okay. So wait, so here's the great thing about that though, uh -huh. is is that was an opportunity to transform what happened. So when something in our lives looks like it might be bad, it actually was awesome because it inspired me to move on and, and become an entrepreneur. And you're a millionaire, aren't you? Yeah. So forget them, they don't know that you're a millionaire now. I don't need to work for you. Yeah, right? so <laughs> laughter is good. The next one I saw that you had talked about is letting go. Yeah. How do you let go? Okay, well, that's the thing, is it's not about the how, right? Like everybody's like, oh, it's so hard, it's so hard. But if we keep holding on to something, it's gonna, it is gonna be hard. But really it's all in a decision. In this second, I can keep holding on, holding on, holding on, or I can just say, you know what? I'm done, I'm over it. So let it go. It's all in a decision. Letting it go. And your last and final one, which I love, is you said, look within. Okay, well, I, I have two things for that, which okay. are really cool. Okay, uh -huh. so looking within is, is, it could be meditating, connecting to your higher source, and, and really just being, again, it's about you, mm -hmm. right? But I have a really cool tip. Can I share okay. that? Yeah, share okay, that tip. So um, I also use look up for that mm -hmm. one, because literally, try it. Try, look up, mm -hmm. and now try to frown. I guess I can yeah. try it. I'm probably just looking crazy more than that. Awesome. <laughs> So looking up just makes you... Mm -hmm. Right. It, it literally changes your physiology. Oh. So by doing that, if you're in a downer mood, go outside, look up, open your arms, change your physicalness, and it'll change how you feel. I love that. And you also bought some bubbles. Girl, what are you doing with bubbles? We've grown. <laughs> We've grown, so we can use bubbles. Come on, you blow okay. some <laughs> so, so what is joy about? Joy is about being like a kid because mm -hmm. kids laugh all the time. I love it. And yeah. then you just made our set so beautiful. And people may be looking at you, <laughs> Dr. Glickman, and saying, is she really that happy? I mean, are you really? I mean, you seem over the top happy. So people are like, is she really, really that happy? Are you really, really that I, happy? I'm so blessed. And you know, it's, that's really one of the foundations of joy is being in gratitude. Are you really that happy? I'm so happy that uh -huh. I wrote 365 joy tips and I have a gift for you all oh. that you can go to yourjspot.com and download 101 of them right now. Mm -hmm. So we can all be this happy. Yeah, mm -hmm. awesome, woohoo. And I love it. You know, you're just inspiring us and you said it's all about letting go those L's and just finding the true joy in life. Thank you so much for joining us. It's Thank been wonderful. You. And I love it, the J Spot. Finding your J Spot, you heard it right here on the Joy Sutton Show. We'll be right back. Learning on social media can be fun, but 
anyone in a relationship needs to hear about what our Real Talk experts have to say about going too far online. Because we're online, we think we're being innocent, right. we're just enjoying the attention. Today on Real Talk, is it harmless flirting or can it be considered cheating? You know, when you're behind a computer screen, things can easily get out of hand. And our relationship experts, Charles and Silva, are back with us. Charles is a nationally recognized relationship expert and the author of How to Find the Right One and Make It Last. And Silva is also a relationship expert and co-author of the Top 20 Red Flags in Dating and Relationships. Well, my first question, we're going to get down to this. Is there such thing, Silva, as innocent flirting? Because we're online. We think we're being innocent. We right. just enjoy Join the attention, I guess you could say. Well, people tend to have a lot of courage when they're hiding behind a keyboard, right? But the real question is, would you do what you're doing in real life if it wasn't in cyberspace? Mm. And that's the real question. And that's when you know when innocent flirting has gone past the point of something that you should be concerned about. That's a good idea. And you know, I do think people think they can say little things and put feelers out there. Without, th without actually thinking about the consequences. But if you think about... If you, if you hold the same rules for, for what you do in cyberspace as you do in real life, in the physical world, things tend, tend to be very clear and cut and dry, right? Mm -hmm. And Charles has a really good saying, is, is what do you say if you, if you hold it, if you keep it secret from your mate? Yeah, if you're hiding it from your mate, uh -huh. you're not telling them about what you're doing, then it's cheating. Then it's cheating. Okay, so if, you're high, if you can't let them see your email account and all that and what you're saying on Facebook and all that, then it is cheating. It's cheating. If, oh. you, if you couldn't print what you've just talked about, whether it's on Facebook chat or on email or whatever it may be, if you can't print it and hand it to your mate that you're in a committed relationship with without getting in tr into trouble, that's, that's when you that know. Is that's when flag. you know you've crossed the line. Flag. Okay, here's another question because I've had this many times where your ex starts to reach out to you on Facebook. They be like, you look good, what's going on? Should you be friends at all on social media and things like that if you know that you're in a committed relationship with your exes, is that okay? Because are you going to be too much temptation to cross that line and to reminisce about the good old days? Well, it depends on what kind of relationship you have. So if you and your mate are okay with you keeping exes as friends and you openly talk about it and agree to it, then it's fine. Okay. But if you haven't had that talk, then you know you're crossing the line. Mm -hmm. You know, Charles always says, we fail to communicate with our mate what our expectations are and what our definitions are of certain things. So my definition of cheating and where those boundaries are, it could be very different than my mates. And that's oh, one so of the things that people don't talk about. Now, should you give, so just in an effort to be honest, passwords? Should I be asking my husband, if you're married or even dating, should... Is it okay to have that password? Because a lot of women I know, I've had some friends who've done a little snooping just to make sure. Men, I want all of you to know right now, she has your password, she's gonna <laughs> break into your phone, she's gonna <laughs> break into your email, and she's gonna look like the most innocent person on the planet after she does it. So, we don't, okay. we don't it to doesn't do it. It, uh -huh. it doesn't matter whether you give it to us, give it to them or not, they're gonna get in. So, if what you're doing can't stand the light of day, Mm -hmm. And the scrutiny you of your mate looking at it, stop. Well, how do you begin to set those boundaries, Silva? So, you know, you have people, I think women, we do it innocently because we like the attention or things like that. How do you set that boundary when you're online? What do you do? Do you just cut it off if it's going a certain well, way? Well, it's, it's okay to, even with an ex, you know, it's okay to chat about catching up. But again, think about the rules of a physical world, what, where would those lines be and where would those boundaries be? First and foremost, you have to talk about where those boundaries are with your mate so that you know what his expectations are and he knows what his expectations um, are, are of, uh, that you expect of him. Mm -hmm. And th that's the first thing. And then the next thing is you have to ask yourself, now, would it be okay if I left my Facebook open and Ooh. he happened to take a look at this chat, would he be upset? Would he be? Well, this is interesting. I know some women who've gotten photos, like men have sent, married men have sent them photos at the beach, or is it okay to share that? And the photos can be, what I mean. What do you always say, Charles? Men, men have no, there's no gray area. If there's no gray area. Really? No. No? No. So if he no, tells you, no? Not. Okay, no. okay. No. <laughs> If you're in a committed relationship with a man and you haven't agreed to an open relationship, talking to the ex, 
talking to somebody new, flirting, those are all taboo for us. It's like, no, no, we don't get it. Okay. So I got it, that. It's pretty so. deliberate. <laughs> so, and it's okay to ask for the password. <laughs> no, I, you know, you got to trust each other. Yes, I agree. But when I you start seeing it. suspicious behavior, like hours and hours on a computer and late at night on a computer, you know, trust but verify. I like that. I, I like trust, that trust but that, yeah. that is our take home point. <laughs> one, if you can't expose it, then you're doing something wrong and trust but verify. Love Joy, it. We have, a, we have a great free guide for people on AskDearLove.com. Okay. So go to our website, put your email address in and you'll get a nice little gift from us. Okay, that sounds great because they're going to keep it real with you and we'll be right back. Up next, we'll show you how to get your skin summer ready. Today we're talking about spray tanning and I'm here with Lisa Willer and of course our beautiful model, Marcella. Now you know it takes courage to show your body off on TV. So we <laughs> commend her for being with us and you're with Blown Away Tan. And you know, I think people for years have heard about spray and tanning, but they were kind of concerned about it. They didn't want to have the orange look. They wanted to be natural, but you right. told me earlier that spray tanning has come a long way over the years. What yes. are we seeing these days? It's, it's come so far, Joy. Um, you know, people were always concerned about turning orange with their spray tan and streaking and all that kind of stuff. And um, we work predominantly with a violet-based product, so there's no danger of any orange color to your skin whatsoever. Now, can you go as dark as you want to go? You absolutely can. We go all the way up to competition bodybuilding blackout. Now, so. <laughs> that's pretty cool because I was yes. thinking, you know, some sisters might want to get, have you ever had a black person get a tan? I, mean, I absolutely have. Yes, I have. <laughs> so we all can benefit from this segment. The ladies, the men, everybody. Yes. Everybody. <laughs> and one of the things that I thought that was interesting that you were telling me is that tanning can also make you look a little bit thinner. Well, we have a lot of people on the spray tan diet. So they come in for their little fix and they walk out looking 10 pounds thinner. So it does make you look thinner. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yes. Okay, I love that. Now, if you're thinking about getting a spray tan, are there certain steps you need to do before? Or can you just walk in and say, hey, I want a spray tan? Or what's going to make it last the longest? Okay, well, yes and yes. Okay, so first of all, we do ask that if you're planning to come in for a spray tan, that you take a shower the night before and do a light exfoliation. You don't have to scrub yourself, you know, raw. Um, and then come in to us with no lotion, no deodorant, and no makeup on. Because uh, deodorant will make your tan discolored a little bit. So we want the, you know, the skin clean and fresh. Okay. Um, but if you're driving down the road and you're deciding, hey, I want to have a spray tan today, we actually do have little exfoliating mitts that we keep in our studio. That you so can that you it. can just kind of do a drop in and we can get you all exfoliated and ready to go. Okay, well you're gonna demonstrate on yes. Marcella. Yes. You're gonna show us some of the techniques. So while yes. you're doing that, I'll ask you a couple questions. So take me through what you're doing okay. and how. It's kind of like a body, I guess, body art in a way. Yes, well first I have given her a little lotion for barrier cream because we don't want the hands all icky or in between fingers and toes. So she's taking care of that. And I've prepped her with a pH balance spray. Okay. okay? So we have her, stand in her. Assume the position, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so sorry for the noise, but... Mm -hmm. Okay, so I start over the shoulder. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow! Look how dark she's getting just that quickly. Now, how long does this last, like once you put this on? This will last a week to 10 days with proper maintenance. And when you say proper maintenance, what kind of maintenance do we need to do that, to keep that that bronze look for as long as possible? Well, we like you to use cleansers and lotions without sulfates and parabens. Okay, so the lotion. What about showering? Will it kind of wash off in the shower? I guess that would be a thing. Do you need to take less showers or being in the pool or something? So there's a cosmetic bronzer here so I can see exactly where it's going and you get that instant gratification part of the tan. Then the next morning she'll rinse and she'll see all of that cosmetic bronzer go down the drain and she'll be left with um, the DHA actually reacts with the amino acids in your skin. It's like cutting an apple in half, letting it sit out, turns mm. brown. That's what's happening to your skin. Okay, and so you said this can last about a week. About a week. If you take care of it, right. what about going to the pool and getting in the water? Is that going to make well, it fade yes. more Chlorine quickly? Well, yes. Chlorine will affect it. And if you're out in the sun, we want you to use cream-based uh, sunscreens with no parabens, mm -hmm. not the spray-on stuff, because that'll strip your color as well. But it's great, and yeah. I'm going to have you do a little bit more because okay. I'm loving this yeah, and just showing us how tan you can get yeah. 
We're going to do a little light coat on the face. Here we go. Close eyes. There we go. Oh, love it. Perfect. Uh -huh. Yes. And so you were telling me, Lisa, that people really love this, that so much so that people do these spray on tan parties. Yes, we can either come to your house um, and everybody gets together, has their wine and cheese, or you can come to our studio and bring whatever you like in and we'll get everybody in robes and they just, just all have time. a great time. Spray yeah. on tan party. A little sip and spray party. Yeah. Like it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for coming yes. on. Oh, you're so welcome. And we'll be right back. Guest accommodations for the Joy Sutton Show provided by the Hyatt Place Roanoke Airport. Hyatt Place combines style and innovation to create a completely new hotel experience. Set furnishings provided by Court Furniture Rental and Showroom Clearance Center. Wardrobe styling provided by What to Wear Roanoke and local retailers including Francis Kahn. Jewelry provided by She's International and Stella and Dot. Makeup by the professionals at Le Chabot Salon and Day Spa and hair services from Revive Organic Salon. And now for some words of inspiration for your day. On today's show, we learned how to find your joy. But once you find it, you also have to learn how to protect it. Circumstances, people, and life in general can often steal your joy. That's why every day you have to make a conscious effort to find and hold on to your joy and don't give anyone the power to take it. I hope you enjoyed today's show. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, every day is a little brighter when you start it with joy. The Joy Sutton Show is a production of Sutton Impact Media.